Perfect. So you'll get access to the slides. One of the benefits of that is in the future, whenever we run this class again, um, if we run this class again, the slides will be updated. So you should have kind of current information going forward. Uh, today, we will be talking about cutting the cable cord. And this is in reference to um, kind of moving away from cable, uh, cable television. So cable tele television, it's basically a system that transmits the television programming via coaxial cables traditionally and more recently through the fiber optic cables. So this is talking about the box that sits uh, next to your TV that provides you with all of your TV channels. Uh, cable usage hit its peak in 2018, but has been declining since, primarily, at least in part, by all the streaming services that have popped up. Um, cutting the cord references the shift from traditional cable TV to using streaming services, which are just using the internet. So you still have to pay for the internet. Um, oftentimes, whenever you buy a cable TV package, you will also bundle that with your internet subscription as well. The primary, one of the main benefits besides cost uh, of switching to more streaming platforms is it's really on-demand content. So instead of waiting um, you know, religiously by your TV Thursdays, Thursday night at eight for your favorite TV show, um, you can kind of just wait. You don't have to DVR it. You can watch three episodes at once if you want. Um, you can watch an entire season, find a new show you like, and just watch all of it, and you don't have to wait for a marathon or anything of that nature. Uh, streaming is the process of delivering audio and video over the internet without the need to download those files beforehand. And the benefits, again, uh, you get immediate access to a whole bunch of content. You don't need to wait for a specific day of the week. You don't have to have a device that records a show so that you can watch it later. You just kind of go month to month and you can choose to watch as much as you want or as little as you want. One of the negatives is that there's a lot of different services, which makes it kind of confusing. Um, so streaming services are generally more affordable and flexible, and you can kind of customize it to your individually tastes, individual tastes. So instead of having 300 channels and you only watch five of them, um, you can kind of narrow that down to only pay for what you actually want to watch. Um, however, cable TV does offer way more things in one package. Um, but you are paying for that large amount of content. Um, I wouldn't go into this from the aspect of saving money. Um, at first, I would kind of concentrate on what do you want to watch? And then from there, you can determine if streaming is right for you in terms of cost. So I have some rough costs on the right-hand side here. Uh, just cable. So just cable TV will cost an average of $50 to $250 per month with an average cost of $85. Cable TV plus internet, which is more normal, that's generally what people will have, is $30 to $250 per month with an average cost of $150. Um, and the reason why that number, the $30, is pretty low is because that's with a two-year incentive. Cable, t cable companies really want you to buy the bundle. So they really try and incentivize that with their two-year deals, um, which again will lock you into a two-year deal is the negative of that. And just internet will cost between $15 to $500. That $500 number um, is pretty, pretty big, uh, but Generally, I'll see plans from anywhere, like good plans that are anywhere from $50 to $100. And internet costs have an average cost of $70 across the United States. Uh, do we have any questions so far? 
Nope, doesn't look it. Sounds good. All right. So benefits of streaming. Um, there are some cost savings. So generally, you can think of a streaming service as costing around $10 a month. Um, so if you only need one or two, that'll be $20 a month versus the you know, $50 to $200 of cable TV. Uh, but it does get expensive if you subscribe to everything because $10 a month adds up to a lot pretty quickly if you have a lot of those $10 a month subscriptions. Um, the variety of content is pretty good on streaming. So some of them will have very extensive libraries of TV shows and movies, and they'll have a very broad selection of them. Um, you can also buy streaming services that are very, very specific. So you can buy streaming services that are very, have a lot of, um, you know, musicals. You can buy a streaming service that has a lot of, you know, Eastern TV shows, if you're into that. Um, and that's something that you would have to kind of get really creative with, uh, with traditional cable in order to get. Um, it allows you to watch what you want, when you want, uh, without really needing to handle or deal with a DVR. Um, and there's really no schedule. So if something is released, it's released and you can watch it whenever you want. You can pause it, you can stop watching, you can continue watching at any time. It'll save, you know, which episode you're on so you don't have to remember um, or potentially miss an episode. Um, another benefit is for people who kind of want to, quote unquote, game the system a little bit. So it's not encouraged, but some services will allow you to, or most services will allow you to do just pay for a single month. So if what you want to watch, you can watch in a month, you only have to pay that $10 and then you're good uh, for the year. What one of my friends does, and I honestly couldn't keep on top of this, so kudos to him, is he will essentially wait to the end of the month, buy a month of subscription and they will prorate it. So instead of $10, he'll pay about $2 for the last three days of the month. He will spend eight hours a day watching all the shows he wants and then he'll cancel it. <laughs> and I mean, it works for him. Uh, I lack that kind of discipline. So I just, you know, pay every month on the month. Um, but with the no long-term contracts, you can cancel it at any time. And then also kind of convenience. If you are staying at a hotel, you can sign into your Netflix account and watch and pick up watching shows right where you left off. You can be on, if you want to, you can be on vacation and have a laptop or a phone with you and watch the content. You can go to a friend's house and watch the content. Um, and that's kind of an advantage that not very many people would make use of, but for anyone who got excited at that possibility, um, it is it is nice to use. All right, I see a hand. There you uh, Oh, someone raised their hand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no questions. Oh, Ellen, Eileen, yep. Uh, Oh, dude. Now can you hear me? Yes. Go, Eileen. How would you know if you wanted to subscribe to one streaming service, how do you know which programs it's going to carry? Like, if I like programs on ABC, how do I know which streaming service to buy? That's a really good question. Um, and we do have a couple slides specifically going over that a little bit later. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll table that for the for the meantime. Um, but the simplest answer is if you want something specific, you can Google it. So if you are a fan of a certain TV show, you can type in to uh, into your web browser, certain TV show, where streaming or something to that effect, and you'll get a response as to which streaming service has that program. 
It might be a problem for people who are old and don't remember the exact names of the thing they're searching for. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I was going to say I could help you, anyone with that, on Wednesdays from 12 to 1. But if you can't remember the name, I'm not very good at uh, directional cues for TV shows. So Keep a list that when you're next to your TV, when you're watching. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. As you as you prepare to modernize, make sure you have a pen and notepad by your TV and you can write down all this information. <laughs> all right. So uh, streaming is not entirely positive. There are challenges. So one of the biggest challenges is just the availability of high-speed internet. Peterborough recently um, got consolidated to get good service to a lot of locations in Peterborough that used to only be able to be serviced by DSL. Um, so ultimately, that is less of a problem. The main thing is you'll just have to make sure that you have uh, good enough internet. And that's a in a coming slide, how much, you know, quote unquote, how much internet do you need? Um, another challenge is just service difference. It's a different process. You know, you're no longer using the cable box or using some other box and it is going to be a slight learning, um, learning curve, uh, financial considerations. Um, while it can save money, uh, you want to make sure that you're on top of it because since these are you know, s relatively small dollar amounts, you know, $10. If you sign up for a service, you can very, very quickly kind of forget you're paying for it and mm -hmm. end up paying for something that you're not using. So you definitely want to make sure that if you sign up for a free month trial of something that you cancel it if you do not want to pay for it. Um, another challenge is content availability. It used to be that there were, you know, two or three big streaming platforms and they had everything. But um, as companies realized that, like, for example, Paramount realized, hey, we have a lot of TV shows and movies. We're just going to make our own streaming service. So they took all their stuff away from Netflix and created their own $10 a month subscription. So sometimes, depending on what you want to watch, you'll have to have multiple streaming services, which can be annoying and kind of invalidate the whole cost savings aspect of this. And that kind of goes into the next point, which is market saturation. Uh, there are, you know, realistically, there are about 10 options, but there are hundreds of options for streaming uh, platforms or streaming services. And you, if you want to, you know, follow a specific TV channel or a specific show, you may need to, you know, really have to look into which streaming service is right for you. Mm -hmm. um, here's a slide on bandwidth needs. I have this written down primarily so that it's pretty easy to go back to it um, so you can look. But the bandwidth requirements for streaming, uh, they'll be different based on the resolution of the video. So basically, this is how good is the picture going to look. Um, we're going to completely ignore standard definition because, in my opinion, that's really not worth your time. So for high definition, which is 720p, that will be 3 to 5 megabits per second, megabytes per second, which is not a hard or not a high requirement. Uh, full HD is 5 to 10, or sorry, 5 to 8. So this is where you will be good with something like DSL, but you may experience a little bit of choppiness um, is with full high definition. And 4K, which is the, you know, what TVs are kind of made for nowadays, you'll need 25 megabytes plus. Um, this is where DSL is no longer an option, and you'll actually need a good good internet service uh, provider. In addition to this, if you have multiple TVs in your house, um, it's an additive amount of uh, data required. So if you have two devices going at one time for 1080p, you'll need 10 to 16 as opposed to five to eight, but it's just a flat you know, times two. So it's not incredibly difficult to, to calculate that. Um, the other thing is anything that happens on your internet, 
will impact your streaming. So if you have, let's say 25 or an internet with uh, 50 megabytes, um, that means if you are watching two 4K ultra high definition streams, that's it. If someone else is, you know, listening to music in another room, you're going to experience a problem. So you want need to make sure that your uh, your internet is up to par to handle the amount of data that's going to be transferred. Um, it's pretty easy to test how good your internet is. Uh, you can just go to Google, type in speed test, and there will be a little button near the top of the search results that'll just say run test and it will give you a number. And that is the amount of um, your, it's that'll be the internet speed that you're currently, that you currently have. Um, and as always, streaming services obviously will recommend having a higher bandwidth than the minimum to account for, you know, day to day up and down in terms of speed. Um, Cause this isn't like a very, it's not an exact constant number you may have 100 megs one day and you may have 75 the next day. So as long as the 75 is more than you need, you'll be good. Um, I realize I put a lot of information out there just then. Um, are there any questions anyone has on that? I just have a comment. I, I pay for the cheapest internet and I've never had any problem with my streaming, but um, it's usually when I'm watching TV, I, it's just me watching TV, um, but the cheapest internet is fine for, for what I use it for. And who is your provider? Spectrum. 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 Mm -hmm. I live in Keene, so. I, I have a question in that the numbers, Tim, that you're quoting don't seem to match what we're told in advertising or, or what we say you're getting, you know, 4K or I can't even remember what the, but these numbers, the M, MBPS, it, that's not how it, it gets pushed to us. Can you, can you translate that? Do you know what I'm, what, do you know what I'm saying? In terms of, uh, kind of. So, um, well, I can talk a little bit about that. So oftentimes when you get, uh, an internet package, it'll say up to 250 megabytes per second. Um, and what that up to means, that is your absolute limit, but you're probably going to get more in the realm of 175 to 200. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why you would run the speed test to check what you know your actual internet speed is. So the advertising they'll they'll give you a, a promise and a dream and they'll you know say they'll solve every problem you've ever encountered because of better internet mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that you're going to get the full experience all the time um especially when you know when everyone comes home mm -hmm. uh, internet will slow down because there's more people accessing it uh late at night when everyone's watching tv or everyone's watching a streaming service the speed will decrease as well so there will be fluctuations throughout the day. And that's why in all their marketing, they'll always say up to. Yes. Um, I have uh, read that when uh, in certain areas, when you've got a lot of people in the neighborhood mm -hmm. using the same service that you're using, that that slows it down. Is that still a problem? That's still a problem, uh, but it is less of a problem as the equipment improves. So um, I'm going to ignore the numbers on this page just to make this a little bit simpler. Uh, let's just say you have your service provider has a magical box in your neighborhood that supports 100 units of internet at a time. Let's say that you are the only one in your neighborhood that's at home you will have access to all 100 units of internet. Let's say four people come home. Now, each one of those people will now have access to 20 units of internet. So it will bottleneck depending on how many people there are. But these devices, uh, each unit of internet is as much internet as one house can, can bring in 
just because these devices can handle a magnitude more um, than your home your home network can handle. So it it will be impacted, especially if you have an older um, substation for this. But the new, as long as they're adding new equipment, it shouldn't really have a massive bandwidth limitation uh, like it did a couple of years ago. Thank you. But that's another good reason why um, running a speed test a couple time, a couple of different times a day for you know one day you just try it in the morning, you try it at noon. You try it at four in the evening and you try it at 8 p.m. Um, running a speed test during those times will kind of show you how it goes up and down. And in fact, even if it will go up and down for the area in which you live. All right. So uh, if you do uh, decide to use a streaming service, you will need a device to access the streaming service for your TV, if your TV, like mine, is not smart. Uh, some smart TVs will have the ability to add streaming services directly on the TV. Um, but uh, a lot of older TVs, or just if you want a more, in my opinion, uh, better experience, um, you can use one of these devices that's on the right-hand side in order to access the streaming services. Uh, the first one is called a Chromecast, and that's from Google. So if you have, for example, an Android phone, this would be a natural natural choice. Um, Amazon Fire Stick and Amazon Fire Cube are also options, and those are from Amazon, um, the company that you, you know buy everything from these days. And then we have Roku, who is still kicking and screaming into relevancy. Uh, they still have a streaming stick. And we have the Apple TV 4K uh, for $130, which is Apple's uh, magical little box that you can add a whole bunch of streaming services to. Um, I personally find that I enjoy the interface of the Apple TV the most, but your mileage uh, may definitely vary. And one benefit of using the Apple TV is if you have an iPhone, um, it just kind of works with the iPhone. If you ever want to share photos during a family get together or something, you can just take your iPhone and point it at the TV and it'll, it'll show everything. Um, but all of these are very, very comparable. And all of these are 4k, um, devices that I'm quoting the price for here. Um, do, do we have any questions on the devices? Um, I have a question on the Roku. Um, what is a streaming stick as opposed to the little box that I have right now that my daughter gave me? <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, yeah, is it the same thing? Is it was a, I just know the name for the stick, for the, what that is, the little box? Yep. Uh, the streaming, the <clears throat> basically what I did, um, with the exception of Amazon, I just looked at the cheapest 4K option available to compare them. Uh, generally, the the sticks, um, they'll have the same functionality, but they just won't be as fast. But you don't really need the full um, the full box. Um, it's also for if you want to travel and take it with you, you just take the stick from the back of the TV and plug it into wherever you're going, and you're good to go. And that's easier to do with something that looks like a stick that just sticks into the TV versus a uh, a cube or a box which you need to have you know a couple cables that you bring with it um, but functionally it's the same thing okay. all right streaming pricing earlier i said that you can roughly think of everything as ten dollars a month um, and you can see from this list with the exception of sling that's roughly accurate. Um, please note uh, that these are all the cheapest option available. So for example, Netflix um, and Disney and Hulu, I believe, are with ads. So generally with ads, you will see before you start a show or a movie, 
it'll have roughly two minutes of ads that you need to watch. Um, so normally I'll, you know, if I have something with ads, I will press play, have the ads going on in the background, do something else, and then watch the TV show like normal. Um, but they also op give you the option to pay a little bit more per month and remove those ads. Uh, the two notable exceptions or differences on this list are Amazon, which is $14.99 a month. Um, and that is the price for Amazon Prime. So if you already have Amazon Prime, you already have access to Amazon Prime Video, which is their streaming solution. Um, the other thing to note for Amazon and for some of these other options is that Amazon allows you to buy season passes of content. So if you, for example, really have two shows that you really want to watch, it might be cheaper for you to have Amazon, if you already have Amazon Prime, just pay the $20 for those two TV shows and have access to them as opposed to having a streaming service specifically for those TV shows. If that makes sense. Um, the other one on the very bottom, Sling, that's live TV, um, which is why it's more expensive. But it's a good option if you still want certain live uh, channels for your, for your TV viewing experience. Are there any questions on streaming pricing? I just have a question, like, for example, sports. You know, to watch sports on TV, which would be live TV, but there's other that shows up on some of these streaming services, yes? Yes. So uh, Amazon, I think, is kind of the big one right now for live T or live sports. Amazon has bought the rights to a lot of... Um, a lot of sports kind of games um, to allow their subscribers to access it. So you'll have to check. It won't be for, you know, it might not be for every single game that they play. Um, it might be for every single game they play. It kind of is team dependent and year dependent. I believe Amazon is currently in talks to take the portion of NBA programming that TNT used to have. Um, and they would then add live streaming the NBA to their list of available programs. Could we ask him to maybe spell out some of those things we may not, might not be familiar with? Okay, so yeah, NBA basketball and TNT. TNT is just a, um, uh, it's like an old cable uh, TV channel. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ask me later. Yeah, we can. I'll check out. Follow up with you later. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> yeah, and if anyone, you know, goes home and realizes they have a specific thing they want, um, you can always email uh, the library or specifically Rebecca, I suppose, um, and we'll be able to tell you uh, if that's available on a streaming service. Um, the other thing is like things like the MLB, so baseball. Um, have a specific package that streaming package that allows you to watch baseball games. Um, same thing with football, same thing with ESPN. Um, if that's, you know, what you're keeping your cable subscription for mm -hmm. is to watch the NFL, you know, you can, you can buy these streaming package specifically for the NFL and you, then you're not wasting, you know, the, the rest of your $75 on cable TV programming that you're not going to watch. But the streaming services will give you a menu of what they offer before yeah. you decide? Yes. Okay. Yes. Always check. Mm -hmm. Okay. Large menu. Um, and as always, Google is your friend. If mm -hmm. you Google, you know, t TV show name streaming service, it'll tell you where it's available. If you Google, you know, Bruins games streaming service, it'll tell you where it's available. They changed the um, the sports that may come up on a given one of those. They changed them at the end of the year or if they move to other places and then you have to get more and more. 
Occasionally, yeah, it's always good to check. That's one of the things that Tim was talking about is the it changes, you know, yeah. it does change. Yep. Um, generally, uh, at least for what Amazon is doing, they're joining those multi-year ag agreements. So for the NBA, for example, I believe the next agreement is going to be for the next decade. Mm -hmm. So however that shakes up, it'll be that way for a decade. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the benefits of streaming services is if you find out it no longer has the thing you want, you just cancel it. Yeah, but then you can't find it. <laughs> That's what Google's for. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's it's a process. Mm -hmm. It is. France is someplace else every year. Mm -hmm. It's a pain in the neck to find it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Well, what, how did you put that, Tim, that you sort of have to stay on top of uh, your streaming, like price-wise and then also content-wise? Yep, uh, mm -hmm. definitely. And you definitely want to, you know, check your bills at least, you know, I recommend once a month at least, but at least a couple of times a year um, to make sure that if you're no longer meaning to pay for one of these streaming services that you've canceled it properly. Yeah. Um, I see that there was a raised hand. It's also possible we just answered that question. All right. Yeah. Okay. If I can ask. Yep. Uh, if you're running a stream, you have a service that you are watching and a tornado watch pops up in your area, will they interrupt your stream to tell you that? I don't think so. At least it has not happened to me for any weather event we've ever had in New Hampshire. No. No, but I get them on my phone. So the yep. last one I got on my phone. Yep. My phone has an air warning siren that goes off every time. So. <laughs> Is it yep. difficult to cancel any one of these? Yep. Um, I will say your experience will vary, uh, but I personally have had absolutely no issue canceling any of these services. Uh, the only service that on this list that I have not had canceled or had uh, again is Max and Sling, but everything else has been easy to cancel. We I mean, they may, cancel. you know, they may beg you a little bit, but it's easy to cancel. We, we signed up for a free month of Apple TV to watch something specific and at yep. the and they made you pay the $10, even though it was free. They said it was for the month in advance, you know, the next month. And then we tried to cancel it the next month. And they couldn't figure out how to do it. And so we had to pay another month. And they then they refunded us $20. <laughs> and it, was just, it was like, it was really frustrating. Yeah. Did you call? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I've never tried calling. Normally, I just go onto like my uh, profile and I just cancel it online. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure I was that tech savvy <laughs> or we forgot a, the password or something. Yeah. But yeah, it's it the was, problem. It was. Um, it, it was frustrating. It is yeah. very frustrating. Mm -hmm. Yep, completely understandable. Um, and again, experiences may differ. I've also admittedly never called to cancel, uh, like you mentioned. All right. One more, one more question. Yeah. Yes. Do you have any specific information about Peacock? Just, um yeah so peacock peacock is its own streaming service and that's also ten dollars a month oh okay. um if you have uh comcast i believe you get peacock for free um with the comcast uh tv internet package no i think not anymore they actually stopped oh, okay yes <laughs> For knowledge of that's less than I expected. Yep. <laughs> and most of these plans will also offer like a more expensive plan. So there's also um some of them will will join up together, kind of. Uh I don't know if I'm a legacy or if it's still going on, but I remember uh Disney and Disney Plus 
um, non-ad, which is slightly more expensive, and Hulu non-ad. Um, I have both of them together under one subscription for like $12 a month. Um, so some of them you can, you know, if, if you're like, hey, I want Hulu and Disney, you can check to see if they have a combination. But that also gets to a point where um, it is kind of annoying, you know, having to look into this stuff. You know, cable is how much do I pay for everything? And you pay that. Here, it's more you have to kind of, um, you know, it's a find your own adventure book. You have to put a little bit of time into it. All right. Um, I'm not sure if anyone was going to ask this question, but uh, the question is, can I use an antenna? So this is the thing that you stick on your wall or outside your house free you know, minus the cost of the antenna and plug it into your TV and then be able to access all the free stuff. Um, as stated on this slide, it's not really my thing, but here's a link to uh, a website. Um, <laughs> you go to that website, you type in your address, make sure to hit the box that says uh, antenna is 30 feet above my house, just so you can see what the ideal scenario is. And it will give you a list of how many um, free things various types of antennas can access uh, from your location. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so these are like the rabbit ears, you know, the old school rabbit ears kind of thing. Where the thing that looks like a clothes dryer, clothes hanger. <laughs> um, again, not my thing, but if you're at all interested in that, um, that link would be good. Can I um, just ask uh, that previous one, what can you get with an antenna? Are you saying that you don't need to, for example, have Max or Disney or something, you can watch stuff just because you've got an antenna? Correct. Yep. I feel like it's local channels or it used to be local channels. Local so. channels, uh, local news, some of the majors things that have uh, experienced federal, federal funding in the past, things like NBC, uh, CBS, uh, CNN, Fox, um, you know, depending on your area, you would be able to pick those up with an antenna. Yes. You're not getting movies and, and those kinds of things. Just... Unless those channels also show movies. It, it's really dependent on which channels you would be able to receive in your area. Right, one more question. Yeah. Yeah. What about public television? Usually, yeah. 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 If nothing else, you can use yeah. to get that. But yeah. um, what about um, they have some services that I can't currently use, but I see that you can go into their libraries and they have their own programming and you can select what you'd like to see if, if you have a a program you need to get someone to do it. You need the passport? Okay, yeah, like the yeah, 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 that, yeah, that's yeah, what you remember. That's yeah, no, it's yeah. just whatever's like playing on PBS. Mm -hmm. So it's like cable. So it's not like you get to go, you don't have access to the whole library. It's just whatever's playing. No, oh, with passport. Oh, but passport, yes. The passport is a streaming. Yes. Yeah, you yeah. can't get it with an antenna, but you can get it with streaming. Yes. So you get a uh, well, I am for one very happy I added this slide because I think it reduced confusion. <laughs> All right. So um, I want to make sure I can get insert channel name here. Uh, once again, here are our two links um, suppose.tv and cordcuttersplus.com. Basically, you can use these links. Uh, select the checkboxes of what you want to have access to, and they will provide you a list of different options sorted by price of what streaming service you should uh, you would want to get to gain access to those channels. Looks like uh, looks like Eileen has another question. Yep. Oh. All right. If you're just using streaming services, what 
be used to get the local news channels, like Channel 9. Um, that would probably be an antenna. Um, I don't know 100% because one, I don't use an antenna and two, I haven't looked at local news for a while. Okay. Well, you can get WMUR, for example, on an iPad, mm -hmm. or an iPhone. Yep. <laughs> A lot of, um, and it was mentioned a little bit previously, but a lot of uh, kind of the more local things, they'll have um, free streaming options as well. Um, you get my um, TV. I mean, I, without a without an antenna. You can. Um, there are some streaming options that allow you to access certain live TV channels. Mm -hmm. uh, primarily Sling mm -hmm. oh. will allow you to access live TV channels. Well, so Tim, if I'm on my uh, laptop and look at a news channel or even, dare I say it, Fox News, it says, you know, you can read their, their headlines and then it says, or watch watch now and so it comes up on my computer would that same process translate to my giant tv screen if i'm all smart if you have the correct level of smart tv it uh -huh. would translate okay um and that's that's kind of one of the reasons why i like um these boxes is it kind of makes the process a little more straightforward as opposed to, you know, this person has a Samsung TV, this person has an LG, this person has a blah, blah, blah TV. Um, you know, it's the experience will be different for all of those TV brands, whereas a lot more people will have a streaming stick like this. So you're more likely to be able to get help. Um, you know, because if, if someone came to me and was like, hey, I'm trying to do blah, blah, blah on my Samsung TV. Um, I have no idea what the answer is to that because I do not have a smart Samsung TV. But for the low, low cost of the library paid for it, I was able to use a Chromecast 4K for a while. Um, you know, in order to learn how that interface was, I was able to figure out how a Fire Stick worked. But it's not like I can, you know, go out and try a TV uh, you know, a thousand dollar, two thousand dollar TV uh, to see what their smart features are like. But, but and could even you figure out a Roku? That would be my question. I, I can figure out a Roku. I use oh, it. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, Roku. Uh, another reason why Roku is kind of nice is uh, they've licensed themselves to a couple of the smart TV manufacturers. Um, so you'll have Roku on that TV. So as long as you're familiar with Roku, uh, it should be a fairly easy learning curve um, for some TV manufacturers. I think it's like TCL makes decent TVs and they have, they'll generally have the Roku unit built into them. I always say TLC, uh, but I believe it's TCL. All right. Um, well, we have spent a wonderful 45 minutes of me talking. Um, does anyone have any further questions or want to go over anything, uh, specific? I just have a question. Yes. Uh, Amazon sells a very cheap stick. Mm -hmm. Um, and it advertises that you can use it to yeah. talk to a dumb TV, a very dumb TV. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm wondering how many of those things there are and what might be actually usable without having to construct a lot of wires everywhere. Tim, did you hear that? Uh, not the end of it. Mm -hmm. um, so as long as your TV has a USB port, 
then the stick mm -hmm. or any kind of like box will go into your TV. Mm -hmm. So that's all your TV needs. Um, and it can be a really dumb TV, but as long as it has a USB port on the back. USB. USB, yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, like just like this regular one. So you could connect your computer that way. You can. Mm -hmm. And yep, HDMI is a little bit better for computers. I'm sorry? The HDMI port is a little better for computers. Yeah, so this recent one... Um, I think it can plug in directly with HDMI yeah. to your TV, but it does have an option for a, a USB maybe. Um, but so this is currently on sale from 40 bucks to 22. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is not the 4K version. Yeah. And so this is the 4K version. Oh, for high definition. Oh, okay. it's a super. Uh, yes, for higher definition. So, 4K versus 1080p. Generally, we'll be able to see a result of it. Here we go. Um, so, if we look on this little image right here, you can kind of see how much more information is a way to think about it. How much more information 4K has than 1080? So 1080 is this tiny box, and then 4K has four times the amount of information. So the picture will theoretically look four times better. Well, it'll be four times bigger. <laughs> That's probably four separate screens of the same type. And it will require four times more internet. Oh, it's 4K, not 4K. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, and just so everyone understands how to do the speed test, if I just search uh, speed test in Google, internet speed test, check your internet speed in under 30 seconds. You just hit this run button. Um, also note that this is wireless. So if I was wired currently using an ethernet cable, it would be faster. That's amazing. So, so this is 303 and 214. Also, please note, this is on the, uh, on the public network of the townhouse, um, which has probably 300 or so people connected to it right now. Cool. Uh, so I could have a lot of TVs uh, <laughs> currently streaming stuff. Could you back up to that fire stick, uh, the Amazon page, you know, where we were buying the fire stick? Yeah, so at the bottom there, it says Netflix, Prime Video, Max, Hulu, Disney. Mm -hmm. That just means, oh, with this stick, you could pay for these things and get this. Is that correct? Correct. It is saying that there is a application on this stick that you can sign into with your account. Okay. It's not saying for $32, you also get these. No. Correct. Correct. <laughs> okay. What about the direct connection to the Ethernet that comes out of my modem and router? <laughs> um, that is a benefit. Remember when we were talking about the uh, streaming sticks versus the kind of cubes and boxes? Yeah. Um, the sticks generally will not have the ability to plug an Ethernet cable in. They will rely on wireless, yeah. whereas the boxes will allow you to plug your Ethernet cable from your Internet directly into them, which will be a better connection, yeah. but it requires having a cable yep. yes i have a question um our condominium recently got access to vidium or vidium internet and there's a list of different options starting with 100 and going all the way up to like two gig how much realistically do i need to run one tv and two computers so Realistically, uh, 100 is all you would need, okay. but I always err on the side of 
caution, uh, because if you remember earlier, we had talked about it's always up to. Uh -huh. um, so technically, the Internet that I just showed you on the speed test um, is up to one gig. Now, a lot of people are using it, so the number is smaller. Um, but I generally recommend I generally feel comfortable if you have a Internet speed of of uh, around 200. Okay, thank you. You don't have to worry about pretty much anything. Uh, I have a question. Is what you referenced before about the box, and if you, you know, for the best experience, you plug the Apple TV box into the, I guess, do we still call them modems? I don't know. Um, does that box, does that box have to reside near your TV? You know, like a like a cable box. Or can it be kind of anywhere and then your wireless is happening through the house? Um, so your your wireless signal um, is kind of dependent on the router uh -huh. that you have. Oftentimes it'll be a modem slash router combo if you have um, a service that provides it. Uh -huh. Like uh, Comcast or Fidium will generally outfit you with a modem slash router combo. Um, you can buy a new router which will give you theoretically better range on your Wi-Fi signal. As far as your Ethernet cable question, um, you will be fine as long as you have a decent Ethernet cable and that Ethernet cable is less than 100 meters. Mm -hmm. Meters. <laughs> so meters. So, uh, so don't worry about it is essentially the the statement yeah. in terms of length of cable. The Apple TV, the Apple box has to be near the TV, like like a cable box. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Apple TV would have to be near the TV. Um, and that is limited by the HDMI cable. Yeah. Okay. So you can buy HDMI cables that are um probably 20 to 30 feet. But I generally would say if you have to get a cable over 10 feet in length, um, you probably should position the Apple TV better because the Apple TV also has a remote that it needs to talk to. And if it's too far away from the TV, then you have this weird situation where you have an Apple TV remote <laughs> that needs to be away far enough away from the TV to get to the box kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And what if you have more than one TV? Do you need two Apple TV boxes? Correct. Uh, you would need two Apple TV boxes, or you would need to physically move the Apple TV box every time you wanted to change TVs. Yeah. What about the complexity of installing this stuff yourself? Uh, well, for Roku, for me, very simple. Um, so the sticks generally are very simple to use. And then Tim, thoughts? Yeah, so um, the difficulty in setting up uh, a stick is you plug this end right here um, into the TV, mm -hmm. and that's the process um, for an Amazon yep. Fire or the Cube. Um, it's a very similar process, except you just need to take a cable. Let's see if it'll show me the back of it. Nope. Mm -hmm. uh, but you will need to take an Ethernet. Sorry, you will need to take an HDMI cable, uh, plug it into this box and plug that cable into your TV. And you will also need to plug the power cable into the box, oh. into the cube. Um, and then that's that's that setup process. Mm -hmm. And these these will all come with uh, remotes, little remotes, um, as shown here. Yes. This has to do with routers, Tim. Um, we currently rent our router from Comcast. Is it uh, would it behoove us to buy our own router at this point? Well, the way I look at it. Um, is, you know, 
this is a fine router. This is a solid router. It's 90 bucks. If you are paying, let's just say $5 a month to rent it, or, you know, just, just think of the, let's just say it's a hundred dollars, right? List price is a hundred dollars. You know, how many months will it take you to pay for this compared to renting is kind of how I would think about it. What kind is that? A TP-Link AX 1800? Yep. Um, I generally find TP-Links to be fairly reliable, um, well-priced, and simple to use. Um, but if you have any like specific questions, I would be more than happy to uh, talk to you about it on, on a Wednesday, or you could always send, a, uh, send an email to Rebecca, and I can give you a more concrete list of options Thanks. Uh, we also have a class i think specifically on um that kind of stuff uh, i am not it's not in the coming months though but we do have a class specifically on buying a device oh i remember it'll be in november any other questions do we get a list of classes? You'll send us links. Yeah, I'll send you a list of the upcoming ones right. that we're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. I'll make a note of that right now, so don't forget. And as always, if you have a um, recommendation for a class as well, uh, we always take the take those as well. And that's how we get probably over half of the new classes that we do um, year to year are based on recommendations and requests. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, no, thank you, Tim. Thank you. All right. And the recording.